This is Mark Tobias in Pushkov, Poland, a city uh, about 20 miles outside of Warsaw. And I'm with Shemek, and I'll let you introduce yourself because my Polish isn't very good. Um, Shemek runs a company here that is a uh, world famous MBE. They specialize in vehicle entry systems to compromise the ignition systems and the locks and the computers. Shemek, introduce yourself first of all. Yeah, hi. Uh, the, the, uh, the real name is Przemysław Chęć, but I know that <laughs> from Mark it's almost Im impossible to, uh, to pronounce, uh, so uh, it's okay. Uh, I'm from the company MBE Engineering. We are located in Pruszka, just outside of the Warsaw, the capital of, of Poland. And as Mark said, we are uh, focused on the automotive uh, business, but mainly in the Mercedes-Benz uh, vehicles. So what you see behind me is a place where all the magic is born. So we manufacture uh, all the tools in-house. Uh, we do not buy them outside. Uh, we uh, we also uh, we also uh, we also do the software in house. Uh, so that's the uh, what you see at the moment. That's the part of the, our IT of department. So you're like the worst nightmare for car companies. Uh, I'm the best <laughs> dream of a of a locksmith and car garages that do, uh, that do need uh, some kind of a help when it comes to the uh, to the making a new keys or for a, of of for a vehicle. Because the car manufacturers, they do not want to allow anyone else except that them and the networks of their dealerships and garages to make a new keys. While we try and support the the, the people all over the world with a, our a solutions, that is both software and hardware to make new keys. And you sell to locksmiths, to car garages, and to government agencies. Yes, correct. And uh, why do government agencies buy your tools? Uh, no questions asked, <laughs> but uh, uh, from what I know, that they use other to our tools just to open a car, to drive it around the corner, to put any kind of the equipment that they want to put in a car for electronic key shopping. Yeah, and yeah. and they just uh, put it, uh, put the car ba back in a place where uh, uh, where it was uh, before. Right, and is this a pretty big market? Uh, the government, yes, yes, so they the, or they buy a lot. And what kind of cars are we talking about? Uh, we are focused, our main fo uh, focus is a Mercedes Benz, but we also have a, 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 some tools for a Toyotas and, and VAG, mainly the Audi vehicles. VAG is the group that has Audi, Volkswagen, That's a Volkswagen, Bentley. Audi, Seat, Skoda, Porsche, Lamborghini, Bentley. And what about, we talked earlier, what about Toyota Lexus? They're a pretty high-end vehicle. Uh, is there a lot of theft of those cars? Uh, the theft, there is a lot of theft on, on those cars, but there's also uh, a lot of questions being asked by a locksmith. How can we get a new key, a keyless key in, into the car, especially that the Toyota is very strict. And they do, and the thing that they do is they say, when you lost a key, you need to change almost everything in a car. So the cost, of a new key can arise up to like two and a half or three or three thousand US dollars. And this is all nonsense, isn't it? That's a total crap. That's a total bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's a nonsense. <laughs> so you actually, we discussed earlier, you have the capability of producing keys for Mercedes, for example. Yes, we have. So you make the printed circuit boards, you buy the cases yes. online. Yeah. Like when people sell their old keys to eBay. Yeah. Okay, so you buy those, so they have the Mercedes logo, the chrome, and so you're not violating trademark law. No, we do not manufacture the, or the logo. We just right. keep it as right. it was on a key before. But you take their printed circuit board out of that key. Yes. And you put your own in. Yes. And. No. That printed circuit board costs what? Five dollars? Uh, let's call it around f f five to six dollars. And yeah. you sell that to locksmiths for a hundred dollars? Uh, yes. Okay. So how does that work when Mercedes sells me my key for three to four hundred dollars? I don't know. Just ask the Mercedes. <laughs> uh, you know, we uh, we uh, uh, the key is just a very ba uh, basic. It's 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 just a start. It's it's just a start because then. You need a hardware and a software that would allow you to read uh, the information from the key and make a new key. Right, but the the raw key 
it costs next to nothing. Yes. Okay. Because a lot of consumers in America, at least, I don't know about Europe, are complaining about the high cost of replacing their car keys. Okay. And the car companies have a monopoly, so there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, yeah, we try to break the monopoly. So, so, so we try our best to, to help and to give a customer, the end user, so the owner of a, of a car, a chance to go either to the original the workshop, the garage, or the dealer, or to the locksmith. Okay, so the, the luxury cars, the high-end cars, the expensive cars, yeah. how secure are they? They are, that's the same level of, a sec <laughs> of security as, a, as the cheap ones. There is no no huge difference between the, the BMW and a, and a Fiat. So 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 for a long period of time, the the, the BMW was using the same of a of the same kind of a tra uh, transponder. So it was a Philips of crypto second gen generation, as the rest of the cars, so General Motors, the Fiats, and and here in Europe, the Renault. So uh, basically, the car manufacturers they stick to the few manufacturers of a transponder so the microprocessors on the, mar on the market and that's it everyone wants to lower a cost the the, or the high end car as we talked before so also even on the Bentley uh, the thing that they do they know that to prevent a stealing of a car is almost impossible so they just put a few GPS's or locator on a car all across of the car even in a fuel tank just to help out to find a vehicle because it's almost impossible to stop the vehicle from being st stolen and there is no difference between the high-end luxury cars and the low-end cars and your company makes some pretty sophisticated little pick tools the trick is a you got to get into the car yes and once you get into the car you can plug into the data port or the in, in the case of Mercedes the ignition system and then you can decode what you need and generate keys. Is yeah. that correct? In general, yes, yes, it's and correct. And let's talk about Mercedes, BMW, the high-end cars. Okay. How long to get into the cars covertly? Uh, I would say that up to one minute. It's, it's a max. Maximum. Yes. And minimum? The minimum, if, if, if you are skillful, <laughs> I would say that 10 to 15 seconds. And you're in? Yes. You stick the little lock pick into the, the decoder? On, into on the... some cars, so you can even read all the information when, uh, uh, when the, the owner of the car is leaving the car. It's, uh, he locks the car with his own uh, remote. Or uh, you can read the information uh, from the key. And you don't need to stick anything into the lock. So you simply go uh, go into the car, uh, you have a copy of office key, and you open a car, and that's it. So, in other words, it's largely a myth that there's any real security in protecting cars from being stolen or entered. Is uh, that a fair statement? Yes. Uh, other than to the non-sophisticated, uh, the the in-app burglar I would I would say yeah yeah because the, the unsophisticated one that will try to break a glass or to, right, or to right. break into the car in a, in a, in a very uh, destructive way. yeah okay but non destruct we're talking about non destructive so, so there is a lot of ways to get into the car the first one is a is a picking a log or the second one is to try and grab the information from the original or a remote and the third one is because on a, uh, the, uh, the modern cars ch should be treated as a computers. So there is like the Ethernet, a network all across uh, the Which car. is called CAN bus. That is called the CAN bus. And if you know how to access the CAN bus, so you simply drill a, little, a, a small hole or there are the access Or get to wires. Yeah, to get into the wires. You just clip into the wires and you know how to communicate with a car. You send the proper information into the car and it uh, unlocks all the doors and it even unblocks of, uh, the alarm so and you have a free access uh, to the car okay so but the trick is we want to drive the car away okay and let's talk about keyless entry okay uh, because I just did an article on the insecurity of the keyless entry systems mm. summarize why are keyless entry systems so insecure uh, because there is the information, so the question answer is being sent between the car and a key. And if someone grabs all this information and knows how to decode all this information, he can later on with some kind of a 
piece of the electronic equipment pretend for a car to be you. So well, let's pretend that you are the owner of the car. He can grab some of the information from your remote. But the first, the pretending that he's of the, of the car, so he grabs the information, a piece of the information from your remote. Then he goes into your car, and this piece of the equipment, of the electronic equipment, that pretends to be the original key. Yeah, we demonstrated that uh, in Germany. Yeah. Uh, with a piece of equipment with uh, lock masters. Yeah. That uh, it's easy to intercept the information. It is. It's a relay attack, and basically the key. If you're sitting several hundred feet away in a restaurant from your car, it can be read. It can be read. Your car can be started yeah. and driven away. Yes. And then what about making a key for that car? Uh, With your tools, you can make the key for the car. Yes. So uh, a car is probably the second most expensive asset that most people buy if not maybe the most expensive. And from my point of view, of course, as the manufacturer, the, the loopholes and, uh, and, and the errors in the systems, so they m make my life easier. But me, as the owner of the car, I would really prefer my car to, to not be the keyless one, to have the traditional lock and the traditional ignition. Because I think that the, uh, the, the car manufacturers in a, in a pursuit of a, of a comfort, or they lost the the point of the se or security and a se or, or safety on a car. So, why are you targeting Mercedes? Because there is no one else doing a Mercedes, so that's our niche. <laughs> so that's, that's you. That's our place on the market. Yes. I see. And, and is that a good market? Uh, that's a very good market because all, all over the world, a lot of people, all the Mercedes. Uh, for uh, many years was yeah. always a sign that we are the only one that can make a, a new key to our own cars. But that's not true. That's not true. So you can make keys for Mercedes. Yes. Now, as I understand it, um, from Lockmasters in Germany uh, and from uh, Manfred Goethe's lab, uh, Mercedes keys cannot be cloned. They cannot be cloned. None that's of them. That's correct. Yes. But that really doesn't matter to you, does it? No, it doesn't matter because because you can generate them. We can generate a, a new keys and a, and a good thing and, and we should say a thank you to the Mercedes <laughs> that the keys are already stored in the ignition lock. So the profiles, oh, the electronic it, profiles. Yeah, the electronic profile of a key that is called a hash code is already right. being stored on a on the ignition lock of the Mercedes car when it's leaving a factory. So the, the reality is, and I, I did a video with Enrico Wendt yeah. uh, that showed that you could decode the keys. Yes. So basically, and tell me if I'm wrong, the entire security scheme of Mercedes can be reduced to decoding the data stream or infrared stream from the key that talks to the ignition. Uh in general, yes, and in, in a very general, that, of that, of that's the way you can make a new key. Your company so, wrote the software to do that. We wrote the software and build the hardware. We also build a special servers that do the that do the right. calculation. So, and your servers are hidden in a bunker in Lithuania. Yes. <laughs> Why in Lithuania? Uh, because of the cheaper costs of the electricity, and, and we have a solar, solar panels over that that all that gives a lot of electricity and, and to the. Into so the why? What do your servers do in Lithuania? Uh, they basically they do calculate back the hash codes that needs to be read from the ignition. So the uh, the process is you read the piece of the information from the ignition log, you send it. Uh, into the server, a uh, server cal calculates you a password that allows you to make a new key. So it's not an instantaneous process. Uh, at the moment, it takes up to ten minutes. So a, a government agent or a locksmith has to plug into a car. Yes. And then email the codes that he derives? Uh, yeah, the, it's it's a piece of a software that automatically transfers right. the information onto the server. But that's what's server. happening. Yes. It's, it's sending to your server yeah, and in then Lithuania server, and processing yeah, it and yeah, sending you back the code. Yeah, exactly. And then that code will allow you to start the car? Uh, no, it will allow you to make a new key. To start the car? Yes. Okay. So, and are you the only ones in the world that have this? 
Uh, at the moment, for a new Mercedes cars, yes. So, are all Mercedes vulnerable? Uh, yes. There is no, no. <laughs> they're this way or the other way because that's just one of the way to make a new key in a Mercedes a car. Also, basically, yes, yeah, so there is no. I would say that it's not only about the Mercedes because well, we talk about the Mercedes right, right. now, but in general, there, uh, there is no car that cannot be in some way m made a key for that car. It will ta or take you more or less time. But there is no 100% car that cannot be pro programmed with a new key. What do the car manifest? What does Mercedes think about you? I don't know. They probably ha hate us, but they never contacted us. They and never they have. Never. So they haven't told you to stop doing what you're doing. Never. And why do you think that is? Because they're wrong. Uh, I think that they they know that, they, or, or that we haven't done anything wrong. It's, it's not that we had hacked, cracked, or, or done anything with the software that is inside of the ignition. We do not change anything in a car. We just simply read the information and we put a something, a new key. We calculate a new key, but there is no information being transferred back into the car. So the bottom line before we go to see how you do this, with Mercedes. The bottom line is there's no car that's secure. Yes. From from making car from getting into the car, uh, from defeating the alarm system, from making keys. Yes. Is that a fair statement? Yes, that is. And you would be the company that would know. Uh, probably <laughs> yes, or a, or a chain of the companies or a group of the companies that is gathered in, in a in in a Lockmaster group. And who else is doing what you're doing in the world? Aren't they specializing this in Bulgaria, Romania? They there are companies like the company called Abritus that, right. that is also a member of the European Olaf Master Group in Bulgaria. Uh, so 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 th oh, there is a lot of. I would say that that a Eastern Euro Europe is like a Silicon Val a Valley to the, to that kind of a companies. Because from uh, for us, the, of the words, it cannot be done, it doesn't exist. We will do this one way or the other way, but we will do this. We, in, the lo in my world of locks, we always enjoy it when manufacturers telling us it cannot be done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that <laughs> translates into exactly doing it. Yes. That would be great. Okay, so let's, let's switch now to your computer, and okay. you can show me exactly what you can do with Mercedes. Do you think they're going to fix this? Uh, I don't think so, because it would uh, require a really, a really a lot of mo money put into this. Uh, the Mercedes don't knows about it for a lot of, for at least a ten years. And they haven't fixed it. Yes. And what about uh, Mazda? You mentioned Mazda. Pro there's a problem of stealing Mazdas in Saint Petersburg, uh, where I was last year. Yeah. And what's the problem? Uh, the problem is that the security level is is very low. So also, see, or you cannot simply. Uh, make a new key like in, in 10 to 15 seconds so with a simple, very simple uh, uh, device uh, that you just plug into the uh, 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 BD so uh, so socket into the car. And that's it. And no Mazda and no one in Mazda haven't done anything. I know that a, that a newspaper had contacted a, a, a Mazda a distributor in, in Poland, but they said that the problem does not exist. So for car manufacturers, the, pro <laughs> uh, the problem does not exist. I see, but and you have how many Mazdas being stolen a day in Warsaw? Well, I think that two, three, two, three cars. And are these expensive cars? Uh, I would say that it's a mid-level car. Meaning, uh, forty thousand euro. I think thirty-five up to forty thousand euro. Yeah. Euros. And how easy are Mazdas physically to get into? Uh, I would say that the 15, 20, oh, 20 seconds. And that's end. it? Yes. So what's the hardest car to get into? What's the hardest car yeah, to get into? Yeah, what's the most difficult? What's Bentley? Uh, no, it's it's the HU66. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Volkswagen lock. So, 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 so. Right. And uh, all, all of the VAG group uses the same locks? Uh, till 2015, yes. At the moment, though, they are slowly changing the locks on, a, on the new vehicles. I see. And so all of the VAG group is vulnerable, uh, the Mercedes are vulnerable. I, I would say that the less popular of the car 
the probably but, the easier it is to get into the car. So uh, because all the biggest manufacturers like the General Motors, the Mercedes, they use the same kind of a lock all over the world. So, so it's not that they use it only in Europe or in right. the US. So also, well, it's the same platform. Yes. So uh, is there is there you drive a Skoda? Yeah. It's not secure. It's not unfortunately. <laughs> no, I mean one yeah. of my colleagues in in uh, England okay. developed a decoder for that a long time yeah. ago. They're easy to open. Yeah. I, if you were going to buy a car that was secure, what would you buy? Uh, I would uh, I would buy a car and modify it by myself. <laughs> So if, if you modify it by yourself, so it's not so it's not being a serial manufacturing, then you can say that it's a safe car. So if you change a lock by yourself, if you change all the systems in a car by yourself, then you can be pretty sure that, that no other will steal all your car. And car theft's a big business in Europe. Uh, I think that it's uh, uh, it's big in Europe, but I was in Australia two weeks ago, and they said that they also that is also a, a big market in Australia. Although I was shocked because it's an island, but they said that they send that they steal, and the cars are being shipped to the Middle East all, all, all later on. What about Russia? Uh, Oh, the, oh, the Russia is a big importer of a car. Also of stolen cars. Yes. Yeah. So, but the car companies are putting like triple GPS systems. Uh, yes, yeah, some. The some, Russian, the European, and the American yes. GPS. Yeah, but those are the high ends, so it's like a, be, a Bentley. Right. A Bentley so that at least they can find where they went. Yes. Not that they may be able to go get them, but they can find where they went. Exactly. So there's really no car that you would recommend to consumers as far as the security side. Uh, unfortunately, no, because at the moment I don't see any car manufacturer that is really trying to 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 make it really hard for a thief to steal a car. And at the end of the day, why should the consumer care if insurance pays for the car to be stolen? Uh, because. Usually you paid a hundred US thousand dollars per a car, but the insurance will, uh, will never give you back that all uh, that money because they will say, okay, your your car was a year old, right? So the value is like seventy five. So you always lose. There's a TV advertisement in America about car insurance. My car is one day old, and they only give me three quarters of the value of my car. Exactly. Right. Yes. So okay. So let's go. Let's go see now. How you do this? Okay. So Shamak, we're in a different part of your laboratory now. Uh, yes. Um, there's two components that have to be defeated in a Mercedes, for example. Uh, but well, but uh, I'm, I will just interrupt you, and and and, and uh, I will say a few things about the immobilizer of system in the Mercedes okay. as it is, because. Uh, and uh, for example, in a Volkswagen Audi group, the immobilizer or system consists of the ECU, so the engine control or unit, okay. uh, the dashboard and a key. And uh, in a Mercedes-Benz cars, the, immobil oh, let's, uh, the immobilizer or system is made also of a triangle, but it's the steering lock. That's a steering lock from, uh, from a, a Mercedes-Benz of 204 or 207 or 212. Uh, that's the ignition lock. Okay. And this one is from the new A class or B class, and it's from a key. Okay. So those three parts need to work properly if you want to start a car. The most important thing for us uh, when you want to make a new key is the ignition lock and a key. We don't care about the steering lock as. As I told you before, we do not change anything in a car. Right. We simply read all the information from the ignition lock. We calculate all those information. We store new information on a key, and that's it. But you have to get past the steering lock in order to turn. If you yes, if you if you have a key in your car and you go into the car, you put the key in the ignition lock. Right. At the moment when you put the key in the ignition lock, the information is being set to the steering lock. Right. So if the key is not authorized to start the car, you, it won't unlock the steering lock. Right. Then the information goes back into the ignition lock and you can start the car. Yeah. So the first si or signal in the Mercedes goes from, uh, from the ignition, not into the ECU, so it does not allow you to start the car. But the first information goes into the steering block and then goes back into the ignition lock. 
Right. So, okay, so, so tell me how you do this. Uh, how we do this? <laughs> you need to use your imagination and let's pretend that that's the car. Okay. So uh, you simply take your laptop or tablet because the software runs on a, on a, on a Windows based or tablet right. as, as, as well. So you simply go into the car or you, or you take a piece of a hardware that looks like this. That's the USB of cable and that's yep. the key. With the infrared port on the key. With the infrared port on a key. Right. You go into the car, you, you plug it in. Yep. And you run a software that reads all the information from the ignition. I'll try to make it more, more visible. Okay. So now you just simply read all the information from the ignition. status bar so you got a very basic information on what's in that ignition at the moment right so as you can see those are the keys that are being stored at the ignition where, uh, when it leaves the factory yep okay uh, because we had played a lot with this ignition or usually when the, key, it, the keys the codes in green uh, no, uh, the, the codes are green, so it means that those positions were never used. Right. So those are, uh, uh, let's call it the virgin places for, right. uh, for keys. The blue one, it means that this is the key that is working and was a working on that car. Right. And did for, and in, in this position. When you go to any new car, you always have a two keys of programmed in. We had erased all this ignition, so it has only one key, and that's the key. Right. So, uh, what you need to do at the moment, you want to grab of the information from that ignition log that you would be able to send into the our ser server. So you copy the SSID, or that's like the, uh, the identification on, on number of that ignition and the SSID is always uh, stored on the keys. So, so, so this way you can tell if that's the key from, uh, from that car. Right. So you go into, also into our software, you, or you copy the SSID. And you derive the SSID from? Uh, from the ignition. Right. Yep. So you read it back. Yes, so we read it back. And now we simply... Read logs. We read logs uh, from, uh, 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 from the ignition log. I'll just uh, mute uh, uh, the PC. Right. Uh, usually, it takes around 10 up to 15 minutes to read uh, the uh, the entire number of the logs of the of the wingy. At the moment, uh, the new ver uh, version of a software software it will take a maximum of uh, five minutes. Right. Because we improved our servers and, and we will not require a 2,000 logs, uh, only a, like a two, three of uh, 300 log files. Right. And these, these are the secure servers in Lithuania? Yes. Underground? Correct. Yes. <laughs> in the bunkers? In a bunker, <laughs> uh, correct. Uh, okay. And so basically, if you plug your infrared key, yeah into the ignition yes of a mercedes like yours 166 the uh, 2015 yes yeah you can read back all the factory profiles that were loaded at the time of manufacture yes and then with your software you can essentially you can process those numbers yeah through lithuania yes comes back to you comes and, back to, to me a password. And the, and the password that you then enter into a key. Then then the password we enter in a different piece of our software yes. that I will show you later. But on. then you can program that into a key. Yes. Into your PC board yes. or into Mercedes PC boards? Uh, if you want to use or you can use a second hand original of the Mercedes. Yes, uh, that you can buy on eBay or whatever. Keys. So 
let's tell me the difference first of all between the Mercedes key and your key, uh, the, and, and why your key will do things that Mercedes keys won't do. <laughs> because that's the way well we designed it. <laughs> that's the easiest. So basically, you can't write to a Mercedes key through the infrared port. Is uh, that correct? The, yes. The main difference is okay. that our keys that you can read, write, erase through the infrared port using our own uh, right. device. When you have the original second-hand Mercedes key, you need to open it. And you can write, read and erase it, but only directly working with a NEC processor. So that's why we also have that small pieces of a hardware that you either solder a NEC processor into it, or you just simply put it in here. Then you put it on a board, like this. Okay. And you plug it and you plug it into our pro, uh, a programmer and this way if you have the original key or you can erase, read, write the original of Mercedes key. So you can take their printed circuit board, As put well. it into your holder. Or, or you can simply go into the eBay, buy a second hand a Mercedes key and you can reuse it in your workshop. So that's not a problem. Okay. So you always have a two or two solutions. Our it's much, or let's call it a simpler and faster way because you work only through the infrared, or you can use a second-hand original keys, but you need to open it and and desolder it. So it all depends on how skilled you are with a sol a soldering, mm -hmm. how much time or the, or, or, or do you have, or or what conditions do you operate because. I know a lot of our customers, so they use our keys because of their unlimited time of use. Have you talked to any of the car companies to show them what you do? Uh, we talked once in the past with a BMW. And what was their response? That there was no problem at all. No problem at all? Yeah. So, and you showed them what you could do? Yes. And did they say you can't do that? Uh, at the beginning of they say you can't do this because it's impossible. Then later on say, oh, it's an easy patch, but they haven't done it. But they haven't done it. You know that for sure. Yes. Because you've lo you look at all the latest locks. Uh, yes, into the electronics because that's the you know that oh, that's the, the 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 BMW. I have to tell you that oh, that although it was in the past, like the previous uh, generation of a. Of, of the cars. At the moment, of the BMW is, is one of the most active when it comes to the changes into the immobilizer or systems and to the software part of the immobilizer or systems. Because every time you go with a BMW into the dealers, they upgrade all the software that is in your CAS. Right. So, so, so they are, I would say that the BMW is the one that is trying to do something about it in a very proactive way. But when I was at the lab in Germany in September with Manfred Goeth, he showed me and Enrico Wentz showed me that BMW probably had the most data contained in their car keys that you could read also. Uh, at the moment, the Mercedes, yes, but, but at the moment, the Mercedes had also joined, or let's call it a joint them. Because in your, in your ML key, you got the information, GPS allocation at the time, but you got also the information on like a level of the fuel and, of, and the information of, of all the modules that are, in, or the status of all the modules that are in your car. So if it's okay, if there are any faults. Right. Goes but that's mainly machine. for maintenance for my dealer. Uh, that's mainly yes. So basically, to summarize, you need to get into the car first or get access to the CAN bus to by the, accessing yeah. wires through the side view mirrors, drilling a hole to yes. get the wires to get data. Uh, yes. And the tools, be, before we go open a car, the tools that are sitting on the desk there. Yeah. Uh, the decoder tools. Yes. Hold one of them up. Yeah. And let's describe it. Okay, so, so that's so, a tool on. for a BMW F series. Okay. And what does this allow you to do? It, it basically allows you to, to open a car. And uh, you simply go into the car, you put it into the, into the lock, you, you open all the protection part, or so, right. or so you open all the tumblers so there it goes in the contacts into the ignition and, and, and the lock. <coughs> so, so, sorry. And then by pu uh, putting a t uh, tension, you turn it around this 
Yeah, we we've, we've documented that yeah. before on yeah. different decoder tools yeah. out of Lockmasters. Oh, so basically, oh, oh, that's the way it works, and and and, and that's it. And, and basically, then you can decode the values of each slider, wafer, tumbler. Yes. And you can program those into a key machine. In the electronic key cutting machine. And yes. Make a new key. And make, mechanic, it, make, make the it. mechanical portion of that yes. key. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, in summary, until we go open a car. None of them are secure, really. No. That's not an overstatement. Y yes. Essentially, every car can be stolen. Every car can be stolen. Or can be entered by government agencies or, yes. or covert operatives to plant electronic eavesdropping equipment, yes. GPS equipment, yeah, whatever bugs, whatever you want. Yes. And you'll never know it. Uh, you'll never know it. Uh, unless your car is gone. Unless your car is gone, or unless you do some kind of a, I don't know spy tricks like her in a in a, in a door and things all like this, because otherwise, I know that there is even a special piece of a so software. So when the government agencies or the drive around or your car just around or the corner, or they usually put a seat back of or, or, or back or forth. So there is a special equipment that you first plug into the OBD and it reads all the data from the car. So it's so the like same radio. as as you got into it. Yes. So nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. It's a great world, isn't it? Uh, from us, <laughs> well, for us, yes. Yeah, yeah. From our point of view, yes. It it, is a for you, it's a good business model. Yes, it is. Okay, we're going to go out and look at your Skoda. Okay.